You guys are now. Why are we talking and we're not adding press record? I'm here at this professional podcast studio in Madaraka, <laughs> aka Emmanuel's childhood bedroom, <laughs> doing take two. Uh, of man, we did some dope improv on the first one. Yeah, thing. we started recording and then, actually we started talking, but it wasn't recording. Do you think I should post that stuff? Do it is. What stuff? The, the, you know, like the audio is picked up by the camera. Oh, so if you can, can uh, that'd be. I could, right? Yeah. No, but it's it's crazy. I've, I've I've done that three times now. Like the whole podcast was just no, camera no, 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 just audio? like in, in the middle of of oh, the like intro, something. and then yeah, look, can you see this red light? Yeah. If it's not on, that means it's not recording. Oh yeah, I knew that. I know how to yeah. use equipment. Yeah, yeah, true, man. <laughs> so I don't know if we should repeat those jokes, producer. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you come through, man. I mean, it's I guess the whole reason we're wearing these glasses. Again, you yeah, like. yeah. You <laughs> put on these glasses, took them off, put them back on. Ah, man, he didn't feel as authentic as he did the first. Uh, basically, time. he's just he wanted to dress like me. Yeah, man. like uh, this is my David Masharia act. Yeah, I called it the Toy Market David Masharia. But you got Karibu Sana once again. Merci beaucoup, David Masharia, uh, comedian par excellence. Dude, I got here and Emmanuel said, David, do you want any water? I said, yeah. And then he just sat down and no, didn't get me. Oh, there's your water over there. You guys, uh, you got late. What happened, man? I got <laughs> I got late. Well, the first reason I got late is because Emmanuel called me and told me he was running late. Uh-huh. And then that delayed my uh, departure time. <clears throat> By, By half time, an hour, you guys. By the time I was departing. But you guys, why are you departing when I was calling you? I had, I had just asked you for the location mm. at uh, From your bed, two. You no, I, had, I was ready to go. I asked for the location, and mm. it took a while to get. And I was gonna leave as soon as I got it, but then you said you're gonna be late. So by the time I was leaving, kids were leaving school, mm. and I got into. I, I had an interaction with a police officer because there are dicks on my car <laughs> S- seriously like you're telling me a story i'm like what do you mean bitch? yeah they're okay so i have a dirty <clears throat> car it's very dusty and you know how like when you have a dirty car people like will right wash me yeah clean me mm. come on my face no people will write you know <laughs> clean me blah 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 yeah i have a friend who drew a dick oh it's your friend who drew the dick i know this lady very well oh it's a lady you guys. yes yeah, what kind of neighborhood are you living in? Here? It's not even my neighbor. It's someone. She doesn't even live in this country most of the time. Oh, all right. <laughs> the, the, she just the, imported the lady who anyway. originally drew the dick. Mm-hmm. Um, but she drew the dick, and I went home with a dick on my car on Thursday night last week. Thursday uh, night last week. Well, Friday morning. Yeah. So it's been there since last week, you guys. <laughs> you guys. And I was just like, dude, now I gotta get my car washed because I can't have this dick. Uh around for the kids in the neighborhood to Mm -hmm. you know just look at a dick and then today when i'm getting into the car i see there was another dick that was drawn (laughs) under the original dick Uh, i think it inspired someone yeah it definitely got the creative juices flowing in the neighborhood Mm. but then so i'm in traffic today i'm like i'm at a traffic light and Mm -hmm. a cop sees these dicks and he starts giving you know this is pornographic you can't Uh, just be driving around showing people the one one of them yeah i mean it's it's oh, one was it was on the box the the, 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 back the rear windscreen yeah right? a big one it's a big. large large one you guys i mean it's bigger than was any, it life size i mean it was no, like, way bigger than it life was size. blown up just like this poster huh? it's probably actually the size the length of the dick is probably oh. the length of this poster oh okay yeah. no because you know when you say big dick i relate to you guys oh yeah yeah why so you, i'm like why, why is this chick drawing why does your boyfriend have a big dick <laughs> <laughs> This guy had to really dig for that comeback. You guys. <laughs> Jackie, what will I say after I thought, that? I thought of it immediately, and then <laughs> you, you kept that fidgeting, you guys. And then Jackie. you kept talking, and then I was like, "Shut up! I want to say this." <laughs> ah man, so do you ever do you ever think of something really funny to say, but then people keep talking, yeah. and then you're just like, so no, you lose I the can't. timing. Yeah, you <laughs> lose like the moment gets lost, you guys. So the so the cops are like, "This dick needs to be out of here." They're like, "You just can't have it." But is it illegal to have? But but it should be right. It, uh, I don't know. Like it's it's uh, it's indecent. I, I guess think. it depends, right? Because like if you're in school and you're learning about you know biology, biology, then those dicks are fine. Mm. But if you're watching, I guess I guess what it comes to is like is the dick erect or not? <laughs> if it's an erect dick, then I think it's pornographic. <laughs> and if it's a flaccid dick, then I think it's. Uh, so is this one erect or flaccid? I. 
I can't tell. You know, mm, he does. Like, he, I mean, he does a semi. There's no vein. There's no. I think it's a semi. Yeah, 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 but there's no vein. So <laughs> there was pu- there's a shit ton of pubic hair though. Ah there. man, I don't know. I think I can send you a video of when it was drawn on. Oh, oh you took a video. Yeah? Someone took it. This is Niger- my other Nigerian friend took a video. Oh, so you did? Did you have to bribe the cop? No. Oh, you didn't. I'm just like I'm just like, dude. It didn't. It's a dick. I'll get rid of it. You, you know? think you got off because of your accent, dude? No, I think. I think uh, he talked to me longer because of my accent. All oh, right, he was trying uh, to figure you out. He was trying to figure me out. Uh, I do, think was I, it, do, do cops talk to you in English? Yeah, English. Uh-huh. So he, I understand what he. I don't. No, I know. I never. Yeah, but this but the thing is, like, I don't notice because, like, I speak. I understand. So I speak Swahili, but whenever people are talking to me in Swahili, it doesn't. Mm. To me, it's not like oh, this person is speaking Swahili. It's just like mm. they're just talking. You know so. me when I get mad, I can't like express myself in Swahili. In, in Swahili, yeah, yeah. man. The other day, some conductor was uh, some motato conductor was pissing me off. Huh? So you know when they like they abuse you right after you you've gotten off the mat. Mm-hmm. So I got so upset. I said, "Hey, read a book." <laughs> like that was the best abuse I could master for that guy. I, I didn't feel like I really got it. <laughs> read a book. That's so a, I mean, did somebody your mind was like, "Can you only one eye?" It's a good one. Like if you think about it, it's yeah. like it's a. No, it was a classic. It's a thinker, guys. but I mean, <laughs> it's a five star one, you guys. Yeah, it's one of those. It's five stars in the correct context. Yeah. You know, like, like, like you know, in comedy, the comedian is just as important as the audience. Mm-hmm. So the audience also mm. kind of plays their part in making that joke good. I don't know if that guy felt that read a book as he was mm-hmm. driving back down to wrong guy. You guys. And maybe and maybe that's what makes it even better. Like you're like, why didn't I understand that joke? Maybe I should read a book. You know? Chico de Mali niambia read a book. Maybe he couldn't sleep that night, you guy. Maybe he thought of his life and it failed. Yes. Did you think of a better <laughs> insult later? After? No, I didn't. But I felt like my insult was puny, you guy. Like you for what? I felt like my insult was lame. Chico, I wish I hit him with a, a better one, like mama. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, Mamako. Okay, Kagwe Bungai, Jesus. See you guys, man. But but I don't know much about your history, you guy. Do you this, not? You know, you know this is the second podcast we're doing. First of all, let me apologize. You guys, the first one you, we did, uh, I lost the footage, you guys. Is that the one that uh, did you lose the footage because the camera got stolen? Yeah. Or? Okay. It, well, it's not your fault. The SD card went with the camera. It's not your and fault. And your laptop. It's not your fault. Have you bought a new laptop? Did you recover from that stuff? Me, I haven't recovered yet. So. I didn't get any. I got. Like, I'm using my old laptop. Mm. Um, but it's not as good mm. as my the one I lost. So the backstory is we're in Mombasa and then uh, we left uh, Ribia. Some guy called Ribia left the car open. So and just by the way, some guy. Uh. We were a bunch of comics, <laughs> yes, but the guy we left it with was just some guy. Some guy stole our laptop, man. Yeah. So you guys, uh, just for the sake of the viewers, but in this podcast, uh, funny enough, I haven't even done what I was supposed to do. Uh, shout out to everyone who's been subscribing to this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> You get within a thousand subs, you guys. What? Yeah, How man. many views you get per? Like, uh, if you have like a good guest on. No, uh, the average is a thousand views in twenty-four hours, Gang. which is not bad, man. Gang. Okay, yeah. it's really dope for a new podcast like this one, man. Is okay. Yeah. By the way, so this is your what? This is your third podcast. What do you mean? Or fourth podcast? I think eightieth. You guys. Eightieth. What happened to the? <laughs> what do you? What, what happened to the other ones? Because you had what? You had the fire podcast. No, this is the fire podcast. Huh? I don't even know what podcast the month. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I just switched it up. Uh-huh. And I I figured out fire podcast is like if you write it on on YouTube, mm-hmm. it's so hard to, to you know, like most guys are writing. The Kissing Annie podcast. That's what uh, guys are looking for. Okay, okay. So I renamed it from Fire Podcast to The Kissing Annie podcast. Doesn't YouTube have those things where, like, if you include a word in the description, it'll show up in the. No, it does after a while. Okay. You know, it's called the search engine optimization. Okay. So it, it shows up after a while. So nowadays, it's just The Kissing Annie podcast. Nice. Fire Podcast is now my vision for when I'll build a studio. Okay. And then other people will come and host uh, their own podcast in there. So. I guess I'm still on the on the way to the fire podcast. I wanna I wanna have a podcast called David Masharia talking to a guest mm. podcast. Well, you yeah, know that's a dope name. I tell yeah. you what, I tell you a good a good way for getting a name for a podcast: Chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it gives you some dope suggestions. Dude, you ever that. you ever had writer's block so bad you couldn't even text girls? 
Because <laughs> me, me, me was a natural, you guy. No, but I mean, obviously, if you like me, used to just grab the boys to men CD, you guy, and go to the lyrics. <laughs> Check it. I'll make love to you <laughs> like you want me to. Check it. And uh, <laughs> no, because I, I asked that because I uh, I found myself. It wasn't even for me. It was for our friend. I don't know if. <laughs> I guess you can bleep out the name. Who is this? Our friend Shiko, Shiko Waidaka, yeah. very funny comedian. Mm-hmm. We were at Havana uh, one weekend and she started talking to a white guy. Mm-hmm. And the guy bought us a round of shots. Oh, so you got you got some fringe benefits for being around. Oh yeah, dude, you got you gotta hang out with like people with privileges that can spill over. Mm-hmm. If you hang out with like really pretty people, you get pretty privileged by association. Mm-hmm. Or you hang out with really famous people, you get famous privilege by association. So that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, you took the shot. I took the shot. So yeah, <clears throat> but then a few days later, we're at uh, a different bar and we're talking about you know shiko did you ever talk to that guy from havana she's like no i don't know what to, uh, how to, to tell you yeah because what the guy did the guy gave shiko a business card which is like who does that mm-hmm. she, he says email me yeah you don't white guy though old white guy yeah um yeah who's dating on email like old white guys fucking guy. this guy's used to dating hillary clinton and mm-hmm. shit yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> uh so we didn't know what to say because like already now we're like okay this is a different no she so has she sent an email so we found uh we asked chat gpt oh, how right. do you email a guy you met at a bar uh-huh. who's like you know flirt make a flirty blah 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 and it gave us a pretty good serious yeah so did she send it <clears throat> yeah that's interesting i don't okay. know if the guy we're not though. waiting for the reply <laughs> yeah. i'm invested in this thing. <laughs> huh? I think the guy was like, uh, has like a skydiving company or a bungee, some, some white stuff, some white shit, like uh, deep sea diving or some mm. boat snorkeling. I don't know. Uh, but I think it was weird for Shiko because it's supposed to be the guy who sort of makes the fast move, right? Yes. Or things have changed, you guys. Things have changed, but not in that type of situation. I think actually yeah, that's a good point because like now you know, for the first move anyone can make the first move but this wasn't the first move anymore because mm. they had already gotten to know each other yeah, at true. the bar so it was so up I to this guy to I, just I, say I hey what's up how are you doing man i agree yeah do chicks make the first move a lot yeah uh, do you get a lot of uh but you guys you told me guy you have gay guys who like hitting on you guys oh yeah I, yeah i get hit on by gay guys how um, do you dress you guy i don't know is it is that how i dress or is what it? do you think attracts them huh that's a good question. Mm. Maybe, maybe it's your beard, you guy. <laughs> but a lot of people have beards. Maybe it's like maybe it's like I have a beard that's Jiggy, not very. I love that beard. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. <Did> you... <laughs> <laughs> Check it, that beard is dope. Oh my god! No, you I think it's like I have a beard that it's not like a very. Because beards are masculine, but at the same time, I don't think I have a very masculine beard. Mm. Does that make sense? No. Okay, me, I don't know. Me, I'm, okay. I've never classified your beard yet. You guys. Now he's not thinking about it. Yeah, did you got to be Chucky, observational? Is this guy, uh, is his beard masculine? What are you saying, you guy? I will say, uh, we, we Oh, yeah, no, I will. I will. I was just waiting for this guy to finish with his beard saga, you guys. You haven't picked up who? Some guy called. We got. Uh, we got the first guy. You know, sometimes we put our till number. Not sometimes, all the time. Mm-hmm. So we put our till number on the description. So for the we got the first guy who oh, actually shit. sent number the money to that till. Some guy called Blaze. Shout out to you, Blaze. Oh, is it the Blaze from? Uh, I've no idea which Blaze it is, man. You know a Blaze? Yeah, there's Who's a Blaze. Blaze. Used, I mean, I, kn- I first knew about him on Twitter, but he's not on Twitter anymore. He has like dreads. Mm-hmm buff guy does a lot of gym content he has a podcast too all right yeah i, I um, don't know if it's him man but whoever it is man cheers man and keep keep uh powering the port on that till number man but it's weird it's weird how much did he send 500 bob you guy can i have 400 shillings <laughs> <laughs> you guys no we need to divide it by three you guys me you and this guy <laughs> but was it for you see it was for whoever the other guest was no it's no if people are sending money it's for future expenses yeah i guess so, yeah. yeah 
<laughs> so you guys, ask guys are running beyond our budget as we speak, you guys. This water alone is. Like... <laughs> 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 you guys, Blaze needs to send more money, you guys. Check it, Blaze. Come on, you're going come over budget with your water. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. No, but shout out to Blaze, man. So you guys, Ivana. Uh, so how did you get into this comedy thing, you guys? Um, I, th- I th- <laughs> dude, I. What like I wasn't doing anything, mm. and not like with my life. I was in school, but like I just wasn't like doing anything that afternoon. <laughs> All right, <laughs> where uh, comedy cl- Nairobi Comedy Club is a uh, I guess a club that used to exist here in Nairobi. No, it does still exist. Does I it think. really? Yeah, but it's just maybe in hibernation right now. I hope. But mm-hmm. they followed me on Instagram one day randomly. <clears throat> they followed you. Yeah. Why? I think they were just trying to like grow their audience uh, so they're following guys they were following a bunch like i went onto their page and it looked like they had followed a bunch of people i think they were following more people than followed them all right which is why i think that it was just like a marketing thing instead is that of like, a strategy instead of paying for um a sponsored posts mm-hmm. i think you could do that uh, so you just follow a bunch of guys yeah and i was one of them and so i saw a show that they were doing and i was like okay cool i'll go check it out yeah this was back when it was like doug Aman, Mina, Justine, Shiko, George, mm-hmm. and I think you were there. Like you were there sometimes. This was like Gecko days. Mm. And yeah, Gecko <coughs> days to go regularly. Yeah, and so I checked it out. I checked out the live show, and then eventually, I, you know, I just kept on going because I live like right next to Gecko. Mm. And one, one after one show, one of the guys was like, "If any of you in the audience have ever thought about doing comedy, come find Mike." Mike was like the yeah, Mike was his Michael team Moya. Guy. Yeah. He used to call him my team. <laughs> but he shout out to Brian and Jor. Jackie, talk to my team. You guys, it's normally interesting when a comedian like you if you want to talk to me and tell yeah. me something. Like you the way I've called you for this podcast. Yeah. Then you tell me talk to your team, you guys. Yeah. You're like, lucky. What the heck you're lucky we're friends. Nonsense. If you weren't friends, I would have told you to talk to my people. To your team, yeah. And by people I mean. You get the <laughs> <idea. laughs> <laughs> Is Gigi part of your team? I was thinking of hiring Titus as my team guy. What? Check it. Mano, I need you for a gig. Check it. Talk to my team. <laughs> I think he does something to the rate card, you guy. Titus. So, guys, so Mike, uh, team guy, let you in. So, yeah, I I think, like, they hit me up a few times. So, I, okay, let's meet on Saturday. We can look at your material. Let's do this. And then... Oh, they wanted you to do an audition. No, 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 no. It wasn't even that. It was just, like, because I had never done comedy before. So, I think it was, like, a, just, like, so I'm not being thrown on to stage with, you know. Like, I'm not being thrown into the deep end. All right. Which, I don't know. Uh... But was but, it was it a gig that Saturday thing? No, no, no. It was like let's meet during the day on Saturday. It's like what just like talk happen? about just, oh, to just talk, hang around. Yeah, just oh, to okay. talk about stuff. And um, that never happened. But I remember there was one Wednesday where there was a show at Gecko that no one knew about. Mm-hmm. None of the comic, even Brian, didn't know about it. And you think Brian and Jordy know about? Yeah, it? the the Gecko guy just called him. And it was like, so where, where where is everyone? And then uh. Brian was like, shit, I didn't know you needed niggas. Mm-hmm. And so Brian called everyone. No one could come. He called me. I could come. And that's <laughs> that's the first time I got on stage. So what did you perform? I did some jokes about, um, I'm trying to think. Damn, did I, you have a set? Yeah, I had some like joke ideas in my like my notes app. You'd written? Yeah. Did I, you write for the sake of now you're going to perform at? I had... I had written jokes even before, like, they made that announcement at uh, Gecko about, like, if you guys are interested in doing comedy. Uh, so I just had some shit prepared. Because uh-huh. also at the time, like, I was into, like, a lot of comedy podcasts. Uh-huh. And there was one day I did Acid. Actually, the first time I did Acid, it was February 2018. And that's the at the end of that trip. That's when I wrote my first joke. And then by the time I was going on stage, it was November that year. Right. So this was like months ago, months before that, I had written, I had tried to write jokes. You know what the heck is acid, you guys? Acid. Lysergic acid dithylamide. Uh-huh. Have you not heard about this? Okay, I've heard, but now I need, now that LSD? you're here, you guys. Oh, LSD. Yeah. Is it manufactured? Yeah. It's a psychedelic Is it drug? like methamphetamine? No, it uh-huh. is. It's it's like it's a drug. I think so. It was kind of like discovered by accident. Mm-hmm. This I, I don't know. Maybe like a German scientist or whatever 
I think maybe I, I might be fucking this story up. <clears throat> uh, I think he might have like accidentally got some of this liquid he was working on or had something to. It was just like in his lab, and he ingested some and he rode his bike home, and he had like a trippy bike ride, and then he rode down his experience. Um, <clears throat> He was like, this thing made me feel X, Y, and Z. Yeah, he wrote down his experience about his bike ride on his way from work to his place. And then I think this was like a f- April 19th. Mm-hmm. And now April 19th is known as Bicycle Day, which is like All right. the day you do out. It's like how 420 is the weed day. Ah. So 19th, the day, the day right before that is Acid Day. Is Acid big in Kenya? Um, it depends on like, wh- I guess... What circles you're in? I feel like anything is big. Oh, well, depending on you. Depending on where you're at. Because if you need it, you can get it. Right? Oh, yeah. Is it expensive? Um, it's more expensive than like it's 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 more expensive than like a bag of local weed, oh, or right. it's around the same price. It can be around the same price depending on the dosage, because like <clears throat> it's a uh, the drug itself is just like the liquid, but the way it's consumed, you can either just like put a drop of the liquid on your tongue, but I guess more. It's more common that it's like on a sheet of paper. It's called blotter paper, mm-hmm. and it absor- it absorbs that liquid, and I guess unabsolves it when it's on your tongue. So, so you put it on your tongue, and then the, the paper just like dissolves. All oh, right. Or you could just swallow. I have, I have friends who just like swallow it. You swallow the paper, you guys. Yeah. So do you shit out the paper, but uh, you guys. No, I think it's just like. Disin- is it called disintegrating? I think it just disintegrates oh, in your oh, body. Right. Uh, when was the first time you did that stuff, you got? February 14th, 2018. Uh, yeah. Where were you at a party? I was at my house. Um, I was at my house and my friend came over. And she, she had texted me, like, a, like I think, a week before that or a few weeks before that. She was like, oh, I just did acid for the first time. I was like, oh, sick. Uh, and then she... Awesome! <laughs> <laughs> I was like sick, and then she brought it over uh, a week or two after that, and we did it together. Mm. Yeah. So, do you feel? It depends. Like you could have, you know, I've, you could have good trips. You could have bad trips. I've only had one bad trip. How did you feel the first one? First time, I was a little bit nervous because like I didn't know what to expect, and but it was it was fine because like I think we, we just split a tab. We did half a tab each, so I wasn't like on a crazy amount of acid. Mm-hmm you know just you see like shit like kind of like moving like slight hallucinations <laughs> colors are beautiful shit is in like hd Seriously. you feel very it's like a you feel it's a very spiritual experience all oh, right and, and, like talking about <clears throat> this it, it sounds really like nerdy and very like uh tinfoil hat like mm-hmm. oh it's a very spiritual experience like the first time i felt everything was connected is yeah. when i did acid you kind of kind of understand the theory behind all these religions and stuff all right like the f- blah 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 but it's like i don't know i don't know how <clears throat> you would explain it to someone who's never there's no correct vocabulary to like communicate the, accurately the, what the what, experience what feels, is right? yeah. there's someone who was telling me actually aman huh? mm-hmm. was saying were, he was telling me if i take weed my writing will improve you guys I know, Manu, the way you are the way you are now if you take weed you guy it depends i feel like i feel like well obviously there's like different types of weed so if you take the sleepy type of weed you'll just get sleepy oh but there's sleepy weed yeah mm. there's different strains of weed. it's called indica indica is the strain of weed that makes you more tired and sativa is the one that is like more all right yeah oh so it's it's different genus yeah so. even like the leaves on the plants look different oh. if it's indica or sativa i forgot which one is like thinner and more leaves and which one is like thicker and less leaves between oh, okay. indica and sativa so do guys want to maybe chill uh you know take the one the sleepy weed yeah but the thing is in kenya like you don't really know what you're buying oh. except like unless you're unless you have one of those dealers who are like oh i have this foreign weed and this is the strain and it's from here with that it's easier but it's like it's like it could be like 2000 2500 like for a gram 2500 per gram that's not like in a bag and a bag an average bag for like a thousand shillings is like 14 grams Oh, okay okay so that's you know what i mean uh. but uh 
so yeah it depends on like with what your personality is like for me there's times like i'll smoke weed and i feel like i'm not at, like there's times i'll smoke weed and i feel funnier than usual and there's times i'll feel like i'm not like i still like feel jokish or what is a comedious mm-hmm. you know but uh, genius. Yeah, I feel like jokery, uh, uh-huh. jokative, you know. Uh-huh. But like the, because like I don't, I feel like a connection is important to like make someone laugh. So like the connection might not be as like you, if you're high, it's like it's distorted. So I feel yeah, like the yeah, stuff yeah, stuff I'm finding you. funny, you it, it might be harder to communicate to like a bunch of other people. So you don't smoke before getting on stage, right? I don't smoke before going on stage. I know there's comics who like like George Carlin is famous for like oh, writing oh, all right no, 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 for like writing one ver like writing a joke or like spending a certain amount of time writing jokes mm. and then at the end when he's done writing we'll smoke weed and then go over what he's written and make it funnier oh. and call it punch up time all right but again i think it's like a personality yeah thing. i think so yeah man. but you, i would love to see you high uh-huh. yeah you got me up no i smoked weed in my <laughs> life you guys no like a damn i was told when Catholic. i was younger i was told that when you smoke weed it affects your brain cells huh? so it, it burns down it, like it's it kills your neurons all right i mean so eventually <laughs> eventually yeah you you start losing your memory you guys so I have this bro of mine, huh? Baby, shout out to him. I don't think he was a podcast. So this guy, eh? uh-huh. this guy is one of the guys who can really forget. Eh? He's one of these weed guys. So do this I, guy, do I, do I know him? Or? No, 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 you okay. never met him. So he, uh, like, he forgets things. I'm like, ah, this guy, it's happening to him. Cause you guy, he can come. There's not. I was hanging out with uh, my girlfriend at the time, some low chick. Huh? So we are chilling. It's like the way we are chilling here. Then the guy walks in, and then he sits over there where this guy is chilling, and then he's like. So, uh, Kate Akwaji. So, Kate was another chick I was hollering at you guys. Are, so you, sure, like, are you sure? That's... What is wrong with you? Can but you imagine sure... talking about another guy's chick when he's. Is he's that his memory or is he just being a dick? No, it's his memory. Oh, yeah. Like, he's being innocent. But so, he started laughing. That's Check not it. weed. <laughs> so, I'm like, you guy, man. That's not weed. Could be weed, man. Cause that's and then also know another guy. Yeah? His name is uh, Steve Charlo, you guy. Dude, I know that guy. Oh, no. okay. you know that guy. Did you know? He called me and asked me, which guest do we have? Check it. David Masharia, you guy. David Masharia. Steve, okay, I will say this because I know Steve. Uh, and Steve is one of those guys you don't want to hang around when he's high. All right. I don't know if I told you this, but when we, we were in Nakuru last weekend for a show, and Steve was one of the people who was on the road with us, like doing like behind the scenes and stuff i think he also did a spot on the show yeah, killed it man. but yeah but we got to nakuru and i think steve is from nakuru so he was able to find weed so he finds weed before the rest of us get there and he's high and nakuru was hot as balls yeah. so i'm sharing a room with a man and steve walks into our hotel room <laughs> me and the man and he's like dude it's so hot here and then he removed he's wearing like a button down uh, shirt. shirt he removes his shirt like this and he goes he's so hot here you see the hair on my nipples <laughs> usually it's an afro but today i'm sweating so much it's like a damn uh but I, I got bangs on my on my nipples <laughs> but like, he was that steve or titus that was steve it wasn't Titus. Steve. It was Steve. You guys. Steve. I was like, Steve, how do you have afros on your nipples? You're 22. You, you guys must. You guys have a froze you guys on your nipples. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think you know the story. Yeah, he, he, he forgot it. <laughs> you see, you guys. You guys, Steve, is a, this thing is affecting guys, you guys. Like, check it, this guy. This guy forgot the call time, you guys. That's, I didn't forget the call This guy's got in here for that day, you guys. I feel like we explained why that happened, though. No. Okay, I just wanted to throw that in. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> I don't forget. But is it? Do you think weed affects you? Have you ever read that though? You've read about. I mean, it? like, I, I, um, so there was like a popular, I guess, disclaimer about weed that weed kills your brain cells. Oh, there is right. But I watched this thing. <laughs> I watched this thing on CNN. What's this guy? San, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, he had yeah. like a series on weed, and they showed how like medicinal weed was like helping people. Like there were some babies who had like uh, epilepsy, so they'd have like around. Some of them would have like three hundred seizures a day, some of them like five hundred seizures a day, and then they start taking like CBD, which is like the part of the weed 
that doesn't get you high it's like the i guess the medicine part of the weed is mm-hmm. cbd and they went from like 300 seizures a day to like two or one seizure a day and oh. in that documentary they talked about that like the propaganda in the 1900s around weed <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when I was born. You're born in the 1900s. Yeah, 1890. Uh huh. But uh, so there was like so so uh, so there's also propaganda about me. There's propaganda about everything, you know, because like there was this movie called Reefer Madness, and like I think a part of it was like how you know people like it was they were talking about like Mexicans and like black people. They like, oh, God, there's this herb that they smoke, and then they'll come and like rape your women and talking to white guys mm. so like not nah, that would make people scared of weed and then they would say it kills your brain cells but the tests that were done that led to the conclusion that weed kills brain cells was like with monkeys mm-hmm. so the monkeys are in an enclosed space and there's like a shit ton of smoke because like they weren't smoking joints you can't get you yeah, really can't get monkeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't teach you how to smoke joints, yeah. really. Maybe so, an orangutan, maybe. Maybe a bonobo. Bonobos, I'm freaked out mm. by because they're too close to humans. But <clears throat> these monkeys were in an enclosed space. There's a shit ton of smoke around. And then they would do brain tests before and after being exposed to the weed smoke. Mm-hmm. And then years later, when there's like better methods for doing these types of tests, people start to realize these people these monkeys brain cells weren't dying because of weed they were dying because of a lack of oxygen because they're in an enclosed space yeah yeah and and it's smoke smoke. yeah yeah, so uh, so obviously like you can say oh it's the weed but it's like you could have been burning anything and if it was getting into their body like that their brain cells would have died so does it kill brain cells i'm not saying no i'm just saying the tests that people base that off base that fucking you know it's not legit mm. so but can one get addicted to weed though yeah you can get addicted to weed but you could also get addicted to cheeseburgers that's a, that's really like uh so anything in excess is crazy. anything in excess is not good for you whether it's weed alcohol or even going to church too either. much i mean that's an obvious one but like even things that like are good mm. you shouldn't do too much of yeah there's a time i was a master i was a masturbating addict to well like 40 minutes ago Forty minutes I was waiting for. Yeah. I, mean, I thought I was doing that on this bed. That's yeah. why I was like, I'll give Emmanuel some time. <laughs> Tell me, this guy is late, so uh, let me just. I was like, why is Emmanuel <laughs> inviting me? <laughs> what yeah. The, behind, the guy who's saying stuff that we don't need to be said is Steve Chalo is behind the camera. Uh, no, they know him. You guy. Oh. He's a popular guy in the comments. Oh really? Check who is that talking? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. But nothing, nothing is good for you. Like people say, oh, weed isn't addictive, but it's sure it's not as addictive as like cigarettes and like heroin and Xanax. But it's like neither is a cheeseburger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 you sure. know? So yeah, so you uh, you you took your acid and then you went. You said you how, how was your set when you went back? You remember you telling us a story? You took some acid and then you went and performed. No, no, no. Those those were like months apart. Those two things. Yeah, yeah. You are, the acid is when you're writing. Yeah. And I remember the first joke I wrote, it was like, <clears throat> it was just like me talking about how I'm not a competitive person. And the joke was how good I am at being not competitive. So I was just like, when it comes to not being competitive, I'm number one. Like mm-hmm. no one can, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like a, they call it, I think, paradox style of joke writing. Yeah. It's a, it's a it's a it's a fun idea. It's not a funny joke, but I didn't do it on stage. What I did on stage, I think I did. I tried to do like some jokes about Jesus. I think I did. I don't know. I think I think. Did I you had, have your Abraham joke then? No, of course not. Oh, Abraham was now in your comedy Abraham, proper. Eh? Not even. It was way before that. Because even that shit, that Abraham shit was hacky as a motherfucker. No, but it was funny. Okay. Of course, of course, it was funny. But like that's why people are hacks. Is because hackery yeah, is funny. No one becomes a hack. To like me, I'm one of the greatest hacks. What are the greatest hacks of our generation? <laughs> <laughs> My well, jokes are all hacky, you guys. Like, but that joke for Abraham. This guy says he takes the hood off the hood. That's the punchline. Oh yeah, that's, well that's that's what. Okay, so actually that <clears throat> was after a few maybe weeks of doing that joke and i that hood off the hood part is one of the parts i'm proud of because i thought of it on stage yeah those are the best you guys yeah i thought of it on stage at as at an open mic at speaker box um 
and that was the second that was, it was my second set of the night that night and i had just like kind of bombed Mm. at the earlier set at alchemist because you just people you just bomb at alchemist but um then i go to this second location for it to a different set and i think off this like you know when you bomb you're like okay the next set's gonna be good as fuck Mm -hmm. so i think i had like a lot of that Mm -hmm. energy in me you got patricia horror hosting so you know you're you're, you're trying to show up yeah i had it there was a chick in the audience who had like some history with so like you, you, like, you always have a chick in the audience so you have history with you guy this guy <laughs> what's the next topic <laughs> <laughs> this guy after all gigs chicken there's a chick in the audience who had a history with <laughs> like guy when were you born <laughs> where did you start this history man <laughs> so but it went well the second one so that's like when, was, so it just popped into your mind the yeah, hood of the, the hood, hood, off the hood bit, and I was like, but oh, i shit. love those moments when oh, you yeah. just you know come up with something really good on stage yeah. ah, that's normally my favorite man you guys have ever been robbed while buying weed i don't i, I know I'm, have, have I know ever I'm, been what like you've ever your your weed dealer ever set you up right yeah um <laughs> <laughs> i was i this is when i used to like leave the compound to pick up bags but um i still don't know if it was the weed guy that set me up because like now looking back at it there's a lot of cops on that street just usually yeah so tell the story from the beginning what happened you called so uh, mon- it's a monday morning yeah it's a chilly monday morning is it chilly well, it or it's chilly. It windy it was nice it was, What's a, the it was nice like? weather it was the sun was out it wasn't as hot as this but uh, the sun was definitely out uh-huh you masturbate and then um <laughs> <what>? <laughs> Check it, this guy after I'm busting on that is really guilty. What the should I do? Uh huh. You know what the worst part? I wasn't even. I was washing dishes. <laughs> You're doing the lamest thing ever. The most non-masculine. <laughs> Dude, I, lo- I love washing dishes, especially when you're high. Ah, listening to music. Because I, re- I really like listening to music, but sometimes like you can't just like put on an album and then just like stare at the wall you know so like if i have like a task that i don't really have to be concentrating on i can concentrate on the music yeah. two birds with one stone type thing mm-hmm. i'm enjoying the music and there's shit getting mm-hmm. done i like that but uh <clears throat> so I've, you know washing dishes i make a call the guy calls me saying he's outside come outside so you call your plug yeah and then he comes he's on a bike and a motorbike a motorcycle and he rides around with no helmet and he's a weed dealer so i so feel how like d- how did you meet this plug i feel like that should be a red flag oh, what a, oh a red flag like a, a dealer who's riding a bike without a helmet yeah because it's like people niggas can you know people can see you oh yeah true. yeah and you gotta be acting like you're doing something that niggas shouldn't be seeing you do yeah and the way he even gave me the bag that day was very like there you go oh it was in the open eh? yeah so i'm just like fuck this guy doesn't give a fuck oh that's and what you're thinking <clears throat> that's what i'd always been thinking when i like oh you've been doing that thing of open he never, stuff he never for a while. wore a, a damn helmet yeah that guy didn't watch the wire you guy oh i don't think he has show max uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> he's on show max though. um uh-huh. but uh so he gives me the bag oh uh, where did i get the i just when i moved into that neighborhood i called one of my friends i said who delivers to you in this area and they gave me the number okay um <clears throat> but uh so this guy drops off the bag i have the bag i put it in my back pocket and then as i'm going back into the house i'm like at the gate this guy comes like a plain clothes cop he's like show me what's in your pocket and i'm kind of bad with faces mm. so whenever I, someone is talking to me and i can't recognize them for a few seconds i like i pretend that like i kind of do know them yeah or like not even that like i just think like where do i know this guy from that's the first thought that is in my head when someone is saying hi to me or talking to me um so i'm trying to figure out where do i know this guy from is he my friend is he joking and then he puts handcuffs on me then i'm like what this isn't my friend no and why didn't you your first instinct wasn't to go to the compound like the like the the, 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 girls in your face already yeah he was holding me uh he was just, holding you guy well like not really but was he holding you like this guy <laughs> <laughs> i was i was wearing a very i was wearing a very nice sweater if he was holding me i would have been so pissed <laughs> i was wearing you know my red sweater with the day uh-huh. 
<laughs> but uh so he handcuffs me and i'm like this guy doesn't even know my safe word there's no way he's handcuffing me and he's my friend <laughs> you know but uh but he didn't know your safe word <laughs> <laughs> your face, safe word is dishes you guys <laughs> <Chicken> <laughs> dishes. Yo, chill. <laughs> but he takes me to the station and was he alone? Number there was another. He was around. by himself. So that you guys had to be a setup. Actually, guys. solo cop. Actually, yeah, but and it, and it was the same guy who had set up, who had arrested my friend in the place that I used to live at. He's he's. I think he has kind of like a hint of an Australian accent. He just doesn't sound Kenyan, Kenyan. Okay. And I think the dealers, once they know that there's something not Kenyan about you, yeah, yeah, uh, it's a play. It, you guys. It's like this. So. <clears throat> Uh, actually, so when the guy before he takes me to the before he takes me to the station, he takes me to this like place. It looks like an abandoned building or like a plot under construction where he picks up another cop, and they just do a lap ar- around Gong Road, and then they drop off the cop, and then I think they drop off the cop. So I don't even know what they the drop fuck off the other cop. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, the guy in the plain clothes is driving, but they picked up like a uniform. Oh, okay. Guy, and then they pick him up. They go outside for a while, and I think this is supposed to give me time to like make calls. All right. So and what are they telling you all this time? Are the, they playing oh, the bad guy, cop, good, the good guy, cop? Or no, no, no. Just... Only, only the one guy talks to me, and he kind of went through like the bad cop, good cop thing by himself. Because there was, uh, there was a time, he's he's going like, yeah, you know this, I can't tell you not to smoke. Mm. Uh, so like, you know, there's a guy I arrested, and he said, ah. You want money? He just opened his glove compartment, gave me 70 Gs, and I just left him. Mm. And uh, and I was like, what the fuck? So he's throwing hints already. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so you uh, have 70 Gs, you got? No. Mm. <laughs> How much did you have? <laughs> Three, you got. Jackie, find your envy. I was, I was going to be like, I have 2,000. <laughs> <laughs> and the weed was on, worth how much? I think, I don't know, maybe 500 or 1,000. So it wasn't that much, right? It was like five months? I don't know more more than that, more than that. But um, it was cheap weed. I was trying. To, I was trying to remember. There was like an interesting point in this story that I've. Oh no! Yeah, when they so when they find out that you're uh, when they find out that you're not Kenyan, Kenyan. Or I think that that's what it's an accent. Yeah, because mm-hmm. there was a, that's what I mean. There was a time I was at this other chick's house, and uh, <clears throat> the other chick. This is gonna, can we do can we do editing for all these <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll, we'll fuck, bleep. fuck boy sentences uh, uh-huh. <laughs> but uh this is this girl's house in Kilaleshwa and then we hear a commotion coming out from like the gate area and there's this white woman who's yelling yeah she goes no you're not searching my bag there you don't know what's in my bag this is the medicine <laughs> She's yelling. Check it, I don't know what's in your bag. And that is why <laughs> we want I to am searching it to you guys. And then they go like and she's yelling. She's like, I will call my embassy. I'm thinking you fucked up. Yeah. You can't <laughs> So now they know now they're they're not gonna just like let you go. Yeah. And that the whole interaction kind of pissed me off because I was like, I don't want to see people getting arrested for weed. But if you're a white lady flexing that you're going to call the embassy yeah, yeah. and you know you broke the law, first of all, fuck you. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, <clears throat> but then I, then later I found out that she had to pay like 350000 But that's what, you, that's what happens when you start talking about, yeah, I'm going to call the embassy. embassy because can. there was like, I think there was like two cops. They called for backup. Mm. They now... They called, I don't know how, like, they called a car, they called a lady cop, because she was like, "You, uh, these men are trying to take me. So they said, okay. Oh, they, they, yeah, these they men again. a lady cop, they yeah. showed their IDs. This whole thing was like a spectacle for the apartment. Mm, mm. Um, me, I was just like, okay, let's go. You know? Yeah. But, uh, this so lady. Day, <clears throat> hey, buddy, you guys. Go, these guys don't have, like, diplomatic immunity. I mean, it just depends where you work, right? I guess. I have no idea. There are some guys who have diplomatic immunity, but I don't know if it it covers weed carrying. Weed I was gonna say back. like yeah, like what can that even include? I wonder. You guys. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want diplomatic immunity to be a thing if it means white people can just come here yeah, true. and do crazy shit. Yeah, man. Like you know? I hear sometimes, and this is. Uh, Which remember, they, they remember can I've anyway, said with I or hear. without <coughs> diplomatic immunity. I hear there's some some of these soldiers, huh? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like during, like, let, let's say, if the president of America is coming to Kenya, remember when Obama came? Yeah. So they just walk in with stuff. Like they just carry. They don't get checked. 
Oh yeah. You know, like they come with a military plane. You know, they have this stuff they carry out. No one checks. Yeah. I mean, cause like, like you're gonna get a G for us guy to. <laughs> to Check search. the Marines, you guy. To Check your partner. Apa wezi pita bila mimi kuangalia yi suitcase. Na nisheria. No, I am telling you. Uh, let me translate. Yeah. I am telling you. I have to check this back. And it's yeah, it's not even a cop, you know. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, what are you gonna do? So these guys, you just decided they're gonna, you know, yeah. like what was going through your mind? You decided you're gonna look for some money. Were you making some phone calls? Dude, yeah. I had to call my uh, ex. Well, at the time she was my ex. Mm. When I called, she was in vacation in coast. <clears throat> you had to call you a cheek, you guys. Yeah, she wasn't picking up, mm. so I had to call her friends. Damn, you guys. I knew they were together. Mm. And uh yeah. It was bad. <laughs> but those guys don't receive M Pesa. That means you have to go to an Mpesa yeah, with your cash. So at the police station he didn't even take me into like the cell area. He was just he kept me in the parking. Hmm. In the car. Yeah. And there was there was an Mpesa agent in the um what do you call it? Like the comp the police compound. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, so you you withdraw over there, yeah. Okay. How much did you give this guy? Okay? Sixty. Oh, 60 bob 60 g's you guys <laughs> okay that guy that guy has a very nice hustle going on huh? and then he go oh yeah he got he got 54k from son <laughs> so imagine if you're just doing this once a month and you're getting yeah, salary true. true so that's what i'm saying that's his but, yeah but i think he has to cut he has to give some to the plug what like a thousand I don't think he's even yeah. there's no yeah. there's a no thousand? Way, yeah a thousand there, there, there's no way he's giving the yeah there's no more people like me so oh, yeah. 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 There's no way the plug knows no, how much you guy, got. No, but the plug is arresting guys who have accents. The plug given maybe three hundred. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Ah, you guys. yeah. But that's loss class. of business over time because now did you you got rid of the plug, right? Yeah. You had to get another plug. Yeah. Or he returns the weed. Ah. You see the weed. Oh. Oh. Well, he didn't give you back. Your he weed. gave back the weed. Oh, he gave yeah. Back. yeah. But, but you guys, guys, guys maybe doesn't you guys bought that weed for sixty thousand five hundred oh. you guys. And then and then do you know what happened? <clears throat> when he was at, so this was Rose Avenue and I still lived on Rose Avenue at the, I guess Rose Avenue is a long stretch. But outside the police uh station, as I'm getting ready to go home, he's like, So do you know where you are? I said no. I, I knew, but I said no because mm. I wanted. And then he goes, "Okay, let me call you a boda because I would like oh, on me." All right, because I would, yeah, I would hate for something guy. bad to happen to you. I said, "Nigga, you <laughs> happen. You are the bad <laughs> thing." You guys, that is the most generous coffee guy. Yeah, he was happy to pay two sock <laughs> from Kilimani Police Station. And, said, yeah, and, and, and do you want your bag back? Mm. Said, well, yeah. he asked you for the if you want the bag back. Yeah, I said, yeah. Did he now start becoming friendly, like take my number and stuff like that? No, if I took, if, no there's no reason to give me his number and then mm-hmm. I have like info on him. He'll be like, oh, by the way, this guy does corruption. Uh, he does weed corruption. You yeah. Guy, you know? But that's a nice yeah. little. But I don't think he gets. I, I don't think he's that lucky like every month. You guys. He's, I mean. He may sometimes. Sometimes, like, yeah. dude. You got my boy you have to 54K. The guy. Yeah, but you, know, you don't do that. That's all on the dealer. Mm. And the thing is, so the. So this is how I why it's like suspicious because i was getting weed like a bag like once a week the week before when i called for the bag i didn't go to the door i was in the shower so mm-hmm. my ex went to my ex at the time went yeah. to go get the I mean, she wasn't black uh, so as soon as you see oh there's a non-black person yeah. who lives here that's uh, the week that i got caught uh, yeah yeah, that's crazy, you guy. Man. I was just happy that it wasn't her, though. It would have been really bad yeah, if you guys don't pay more money. Yeah, three fifty G's. I think that's the going rate for white people. <laughs> yeah. Ah man. So you guy, uh, what do you think of the comedy scene in Kenya, you guy? It sucks. Now you're, Bunch of you hacks. Think it sucks, huh? Bunch of fucking uninspired <laughs> hacks. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but me think the comedy scene is divided right now, you guy. Dude, it's bad. Huh? It's it's not. It's bad, and it's it's uh at least our scene i mean it's not there's obviously there's good shit happening but i guess i guess it's like what you focus on because like whenever there's good shit happening there's gonna be bad shit happening right i mean i think politics is creeping in there. but politics again i think that's what happens when there's shit if, if people are getting take if people are getting taken advantage of that means that there are people that can be taken advantage of which is a resource mm. which i think is like uh like when people say like more mo money more problems when the money comes in that's when the problems are coming in it means that there's 
I think like the negative shit is a sign that there's good shit mm. going on, and I mm. think it's like a time <clears throat> that you gotta like be aware of that and then know how to operate but within the, that context. But the scene is so tiny for like navigating, like like how many rooms in Kenya they like. You know, like three guys or four guys running rooms. But so I guess if there is politics in such a small <laughs> scene. Yeah, it's just going to be politics wherever humans are. No matter, even when it was smaller, I guess the politics were, was just like smaller scale politics. Uh, yeah, but I'm sure this because uh, I've I've heard Joe Rogan talk about the politics ah, when they were at Comedy Cellar. Joe Rogan is a. Uh, you know Joe Rogan is a podcast. Joe Rogan, yeah. Joe Rogan. Yeah. Yeah. I have an uncle. Joe Rogan. Not Joe Rogan. Eh? Joe Rogan is a <laughs> ah, big. Ah, Joe Rogan. Yeah, he's a huge <laughs> podcaster from America. You know. What? Huge podcast, you guys. That podcast in America? Nah, you guys. That guy is a beast, you guys. So this guy was saying, yeah? <laughs> this guy was saying the way the. Uh, is that chick called Mint? Mint? Hmm? The comedy seller chick? Is it Mincy? Mint? Mitzi? Mitzi. Yeah. Yeah, so there are some people she used to like and oh, yeah. put up. Then there's some people she never used to like and put up. But what was that informed by? Was it like they she liked their comedy or she I think just didn't she liked like them as people? Vibe, you guy. But I'm not sure. I'm just I'm just trying to say what I, I remember. But my point is, and the only the reason I brought it up with you is I think you're the only one we can talk about it without any consequences happening. Right? What do you mean? <laughs> No, you guy, you're an independent guy, you guy. <laughs> yeah, I can't talk about this with Steve Charlo, you guy. You never perform again, you guy. Check you are banned. <laughs> but I tell you what, me, I think, and this is this was my this is why I've, I've brought it up. Huh? I think even if you're you're running a successful room, I, I don't think you can control human beings. You can't control comedians, you guy. I mean, so you can to an extent because there's already some control that's happening, mm. whether it's backed financially mm. or like mis- misinterpretations of the way certain things work to a certain extent you can yeah true by the way. uh maybe it's not gonna be maybe whatever is controlling people now might not always be controlling them for you know in the long run but mm. right now at least there was but I think if you're in such a scene, you just lie low and just perform wherever you can. You gotta can. keep your head down, and do, which I'm not, I'm not very good at. <laughs> oh, you're not good at keeping your I, head down. I, uh, my mouth can't. I just, I just find myself just saying shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're here, you guys. <laughs> They say you gotta just keep your head down, do your spots, get as much stage time as possible. But me, sometimes I'm saying shit I don't even realize mm. I shouldn't be saying. Mm. <laughs> uh, Yesterday, Brian was making fun of me. He was like, how do you have 10,000 tweets? <laughs> you got your 10,000 tweets. 10.8. And then he was like, what is that? That's three four, three to four tweets nah. a day. This guy can tweet while here about something on Gong Road. Check it. Driving on Gong Road and oh, yeah. seeing a cop slapping someone. Oh, yeah, dude. I lie on Twitter all the time. That's my favorite <laughs> shit these days. Lying I'll be, on Twitter. I'll be in my bed talking about, I just saw a guy at the car Carrefour <laughs> trying on different roll-on deodorants. <laughs> That's why you shouldn't believe anything on Twitter, you oh, guy. Don't. You should never believe the internet. It, I yeah. love spreading misinformation, <laughs> but <laughs> every time, every time I'm on Twitter, I'm like, wait a minute, you guys are here to inform. Yeah, I'm here to misinform. Yeah, can you, that place, you guys, is a terrible. Place. Uh, I'm, I'm not very good at tweet, like, but tweeting, yeah, though. Wait, hold on. So we're talking about um, we're talking about owning the scene, comedy. Yeah. So like things. So there's a lot of you know. <laughs> pretty good. Uh. They say the best thing to do is just keep your head down, do, tell your jokes, write your jokes, do the, all the spots you can, and that's how you get better. And, and if you're getting better, be you'll killer. get noticed. Well, yeah, that's part of... You, you don't have to be a killer. You just have to be trying to get better. Mm. And eventually, you'll get to killing, or inshallah. Yeah. But... Um, <clears throat> you guys, there's a comedian who came and told me. You guys, comedians really come and tell me. They're rough comedy stories, huh? comedian came and told me about this guy who runs a room you guy yeah? but this guy started telling him how much he earns per month per, per hour you per mi- he was like dude he, he said listen <laughs> Jackie, make- do you know how much i earn every hour he said he said do you know how much because mu- i know the story too <laughs> said, oh he you- told you the story he's, he wasn't telling everyone <laughs> <laughs> so yeah this guy may thought he was confiding in me you guy that he guy was, is a punk he was like do you know how much the, he was the story was like do you know how much money I've I've lost just by talking to you. Uh, can you imagine? This guy is degrading. This guy is <laughs> like, just like what the fuck? <laughs> You're not even my boss. Ah, man, you guy. Maybe I think with power comes responsibility. 
you. The great it's, power comes great fuckery. Even when you, even you become, when you become a really good comic, I realize you have to be very careful how you address, how you treat the new comics. Oh, yeah. okay? Although I know you are rough with them, you guys. <laughs> this guy is rough with guys, you guys. Come if you're bombing, you really <laughs> rough. I think you go for shows to see who bomb. You I guys. love watching comics bomb, and I feel like, and that's. I don't know. It's so. It, it, do you not like watching people bomb? Yeah, it's funny. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. and it's and it's not funny in a way where you're just it's like. It's funny because oh, you're feeling their pain. Not even. Well, take it. Ah, this guy exa- well, yeah, actually, exactly. Like I can, I know what is happening, <laughs> and it's like I've bombed too. It's not like it's not like I'm laughing because like I'm above bombing. It's mm. like it's like I, I know exactly what's happening. Like Norm Macdonald would always say, like comedy is surprise. Mm. So if you try and make someone laugh. And they don't laugh. That's a surprise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is why Ruby is my favorite comedian. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> the bombing extraordinary. Guy. No, but uh, it's like <clears throat> it's fun. It's like you know what it feels like. You know what's happening, and then when you're removed from it, you have like a bird's eye view of the bomb. Yeah. So you can even be like, ah, you can, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. But yeah. it's like it's, it's it's entertaining. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so you guys, you guys ready to go to school today? Uh, where did I go to school for? Okay, let's let me start or? for. Let me start with where did you get the accent? Then? See Netflix. Uh-huh. Everybody always asks where I got this accent from, and it's in Netflix. Uh, but you guys, I'm sure you don't know you have an accent. You guys went to Nigeria. Eh? You guys, these guys were saying I have an accent. You guys from Kenya? Chick, are you Kenyan? You have an accent. <laughs> Jimmy, what? Do you know what I think the dumbest thing is? Yeah. Is I think it's so dumb when people say I don't have an accent because it just means you don't know what the word accent means. Uh, Even like Americans, I I heard one American say or like was replying to someone talking about an American accent, and she was like, "Wait a minute, isn't it you guys who have the accent?" No, she said, and it's like, "Do you not like how do we, I don't know?" For me, it's it like it kind of baffles me. Mm, mm. When like some things you thought are commonly understood. Mm or not but maybe guys when they ask you about your accent they, they assume you lived in america but yes but that's not even what i'm talking about what mm-hmm. i'm talking about is when pe- like right now you said you think you don't have an accent like everyone has an accent yeah. even like countries no, have an accent because uh, you're wrong yeah because i'm wrong cities <laughs> take it, take it. <laughs> cities have accents yeah, true. Yeah, households right. have accents even yeah. friend groups can yeah. have, have, you accents. Ever, have you ever seen my namorumba's friend i mean brother Oh yeah, like they talk. I they like have, they have the Maroon accent. Yeah, man. and then even even outside of that, like they're they're very close friends. There's mm. a ver- there's a lot of like speech or similar speech patterns mm. or certain phrases or words that people use. Like the same, like you like you might say Czechy is like comedy scene accent. Yeah, yeah. no, you guy. I should have patented that stuff, you guy. Yeah, you guys people <laughs> made a chick, and then when she talks, they're like, "What the heck is this, you guy?" Oh. It's not a chick I met over here, you guy, but. <laughs> Okay, what where, the, where where is, the heck where is, is that? Holo? <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously, yeah. There's some there's some uh, accents that can be jarring if it's your first experience with it. Mm. Like if you're, if you're talking to like a someone from Scotland, yeah. you're just or like Ireland. I, okay. no, you go, oh, yeah, you know, there's Luke. a comedian called Luke. Yeah. Yeah, the guy sends me voice notes. <laughs> They don't understand what the heck he's saying. Jake, hello, brother. We you know one of the things that I want to tell you is, you know, I'm like, what are you I love, saying? I love man? watching people talk to Luke because no one, no one understands him. <laughs> Everyone's like, huh? 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 <laughs> it's a whole different language. But there's something Trevor Noah said which was interesting. Like, people have dumbed down the African accents. Huh? You mean Africans or non Africans? Uh, Africans. Uh-huh. Like the African accents. Like, one of the ways to. Uh, like. Uh, an example is someone with a uh, say a Kikuyu accent, all right, and then there, there are two people saying the same thing, say maybe about uh, a study about atoms or something, eh? but one is saying in a Kikuyu accent, the other one is saying in an American or British accent. So people m- be more likely to believe the other guy be just because they have a British or oh, American yeah. accent. Like take him more seriously. It's called racism. Yeah, it's the same way. Like <clears throat> like when. I guess some not you know some Americans will hear an Indian person say something miscorrectly or incorrectly or something. They'll they hear an Indian person say something like miscorrectly, mm-hmm. and they'll be like, "Oh my God, this person is so dumb; they don't understand yeah, English." Yeah. But a person can say something wrong in a French accent, yeah. and you're like, "Oh my God, that's so hot!" Or that's American sexy. accent, either. Yeah, it's just like 
It's just called. I think it's called racism. Mm, yeah, it is. You guys. Did we just discover but, racism? But I think it's often more by African. Thing. Of course, we get the. We are on the. What do you call it? The bad side of. <laughs> of history. Yeah. Not even that. I'm trying to. We just have like the most negative consequences or experiences with racism because mm-hmm. we are the blackest. Have you ever heard the joke by what's this guy's name? Uh, Louis C.K. So he says that there's a joke about <laughs> there's a joke about you, what? You, said, you said have you ever heard the joke about Louis C.K. and Steve behind the camera's like Mm-mm. <laughs> I said no. <laughs> <Let you go. laughs> Wait for me to tell the joke. <laughs> so uh, so this guy says that as a white guy he can go to any moment in time and oh, yeah. just You've had that joke, right? I mean, no, I'm, I'm agreeing with that. Yeah, so you can go back in history in a time machine to any time and he'll still be, be good. the top G, you guys. Mm-hmm. Huh? Still be twitching, you guys, his breast, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys, uh, and uh, it was really funny. I've, I've, I've massacred it, but it was really funny. Oh, yeah, I bet. Because um, you see, like, us guys, if we go back in time, you guys, we, we're engaging the plantation, you guys. Plantation? The, there was. <laughs> concentration camps for Kikuyus. Me, I'm going to a concentration yeah, camp. Yeah, okay. and they're that taking my and they're taking my balls. <laughs> Actually, no, no. I'll be a collaborator. <coughs> I'd be a collaborator and set yeah. up my uh, lineage pretty uh, well. Yeah, true. You see all these rich niggas. Yeah, they collaborated. You guys, you guys, we should collaborate with the Chinese right now. We should learn from history. You know, you know. I, I was thinking the other day. I was like, how come people are so scared of China taking over the world and becoming the next superpower? But at the same time, everyone agrees that Chinese products are the worst products. Yeah, like, are we scared of getting attacked by, like, a plastic <laughs> missile? <laughs> An ineffective missile. <laughs> but you know, being stabbed by Hello a blunt knife Hello is one of the Kitty. worst. <laughs> Hello Kitty missile. <laughs> you guy, being stabbed by a blunt, blunt knife is very painful, you guy. You'd rather an effective German knife. German knife? Yeah, man. as in my point is... <laughs> My point is being attacked by hey, a blunt. A German knife. Can you imagine a missile which is not effective? It'll just blow off your hand or your finger, you guy. You guy, you'll be maimed, you guy. I still rather be dead. No, nah, I, I, I can, I can live with nine fingers. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I'm on nine fingers right now. I got bit by a dog last week, so um, one of my fingers is out of commission. But you got a, re- that's nasty, yeah. It is. It's pretty gnarly. It beat you like. And, and like it's better to be big. Why that? Than a chihuahua. Uh. Hey guy, this guy must take our joke now, you guy. Erumudia <laughs> will sue you, guy. Check it that joke. It is my joke. I did it. Steve Chano did it on Manu's podcast, and that is not best. I don't think that's uh, best. You guy, what happened to that dog, you guy? Huh? Nothing. They just uh... <laughs> that gash is big, man. Huh? I know. And then I went to the hospital, and then they said that for animal bites, they don't. Uh, um, they don't. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like they advise to not cover it or like dress it up. Were you petting it? I was. So I was in um, <clears throat> I was at a workshop, a writer's workshop. So a bunch of comics around. Room is full of comics, full of niggas. Mm. My point is, there was a there was a lot of other people yeah. that the dog could have chosen to, to sit bite with. you there. So the dog walks in, and then some people are scared of dogs. <clears throat> And then Eric goes, careful, the dog bites. I'm thinking, you know, it's nice to know, but what am I going to do with is that it information? Normally at two it's trips? the owner's dog. Oh, uh, she came with it. Yeah. Uh-huh. So Eric is like, careful, the dog bites. I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that info, because I'm not, you know, it's not like I walked up to the dog's cage. The dog is here in the restaurant. If it's biting, it's biting. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to be careful. It came into your space. Yeah. Right? That's like if a if a guy with a gun came here and I'm like, careful, that gun has bullets. Yeah. Tell the guy with the gun. <laughs> yeah, true. You know, but uh, so it it does a lap around the room and then it comes back and sits next to me and then I go, who does he bite? And then everybody's laughing, thinking I'm joking. Uh-huh. Some some people thought I said, where does he bite? Uh-huh. Uh, and then it just like snuggles up next to me. It's what, just sitting. What it's type just, of dog was? It looked it looked like a well taken care of Shenzi. Okay. Like a manicured <laughs> street dog, but it would look very healthy. Look very, it was a ni- nice looking dog, mm. and it's just like it's it's like you know how like dogs like if they're com- like they'll push up against you. And yeah. I was like, oh nice, this dog must feel a great energy coming off of me. Yeah. I was wrong because uh, it just turns around and goes and then bites me. I am, and it, my, b- it bit you hard like ah 
Yeah, yeah my really finger. No, no, no. Like, like it went. You just it, it went like, it, like after it bit me once, it kind of like pulled back, and it was still going and like it, 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 we're like at a standoff. Uh. And my finger went numb. It was it was like stiff and numb, and I couldn't move it. And then I noticed I was bleeding, <clears throat> so I, I got it wrapped. Uh, I had already been drinking a beer at two grapes, two and everybody bleeding. was everybody was talking about. <clears throat> Oh, do you, go to, you gotta go to the hospital, get a rabies shot or tetanus shot, get some antibiotics so it doesn't get an infection. I'm just like, if I go to the hospital, then I'm gonna, they're gonna give me antibiotics and then I have to stop drinking. So I'm like, let me just get the drinking out of the way, uh, get two more go. beers, go to a different bar, drink beers for cheaper, and it's, and now at this time it's past midnight, so it's mm-hmm. Valentine's Day. I'm like I gotta get Valentine's Day out of the way too. Yeah. <laughs> so you know. So you didn't go. You. Yeah. So I had to, you know, I got I got Valentine's Day done by like 4 a.m. So I went or 5 a.m. So I, I I went home and I slept, and uh, I woke up the next day afternoon and then I went to the hospital and then I did the shit. Oh, the rabies stuff. Rabies, huh? tetanus. I'm on antibiotics. I wish I should be done today actually. But uh-huh. the, should be back drinking. You guy, Mazi. So, you guy, you didn't t- you didn't answer my question about school, you guy. Oh yeah. What? So, <clears throat> the first school I went to outside of Kenya was called International School of Wagadugu ISO, and it was an American school in Burkina Faso. All right. And that's when I was six to eight, and then after that, I went to school in Burundi. The school I went to in Burundi was called Ecole Belge, which is French for Belgium school, Belgian school. Wait, the first one is in Ouagadougou. Yeah. Ouagadougou is in? Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso. Yeah. How was it like that? Do you, was, do you have good memories? Do you have memories because you're... Yeah, but okay, so that's the Six thing. to eight, right? Uh, yeah, six to eight. But the thing is, when you live outside of Kenya and like the way I was, like because of my dad's job and it's like a NGO job, yeah. you're not like the one inchi of Burkina it's like the people you know like the school I went to is called International School, school of so the, Burkina so the niggas I'm with it's, in, it's like few Burkina Faso people like my best friend was <coughs> Danish you know mm-hmm. you, you like when, when you tell someone oh I lived in Burkina Faso they, they think like oh you're like like a Burkina Faso dude it's like dude I, my best friend was from Denmark yeah. <coughs> so it's a bubble yeah um my teachers speak like this. Yeah, where have I done this again? Because you're 40. But, uh, <laughs> what the heck is this? <laughs> Check it was a bubble. What, is, <laughs> what a reference is that? Um, so yeah, and then after that, I went to a French school in Burundi for a year and a half. Uh, and then after that, Zambia, back to American schools, uh, AIS, American International, A- AISL, American International School of Lusaka. Mm. For, I think, I think I turned... Ten, like the day after I landed in Zambia, and then we left, and I was twelve. You guys, this being plucked around never used to affect you, guy. What? Like you make friends, and then now you're. Yeah. Because me, I remember when I was growing up, my dad. Okay, I didn't go to Wagadugu, but my dad took me. I was in Westlands Primary. I was. I had some very good buddies where we used to live around there. Then he took us to Nakuru, and then he brought us back to Westlands. So now when I was in Nakuru. Uh, when I came back, my friends had moved on, and me, I thought, I'm like, yeah, we're back. But them, that you know, we weren't as, oh, yeah. you know, like you guys, but I'm back, so we continue with this thing. But you guys, those guys are not keen on that, you guys. You guys, did you feel that? Do you feel like you're being Yeah, but the thing is, like, flipped. again, this these, the people that I was in school with, they were all people, like, like, I guess, like, 95% of the people in these schools are just like you. They're also just being moved around. Oh, right. So, it's, like, they know what it's like. So, you're all, you guys, dysfunctional. Nomads. Yeah. Um, and then after Zambia, we moved to Ethiopia for five years. In Ethiopia, I went to two different schools. I went to International Community School, which was an American school. Mm-hmm. And then I got kicked out of that school for having weed in my bag. Mm. Then I went to a British school, and that's where like I f- finished high school, and then we came back to Wait, Kenya. Wait, you guys, that thing is <laughs> <laughs> you're kicked out because of having weed in your bag, you guys. Yeah. 
what you know that joke I, I don't know if you saw the joke i did on comedy riot <clears throat> when i was talking about the placebo effect and i gave this example of um uh, watch comedy right on showmax by yeah, the way yeah 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 uh i gave this example of this i was like oh when i was in high school i used to sell weed to eighth graders mm -hmm. except it wasn't even weed like it was like rolled up tea all right so i first i first started off selling eighth graders like rolled up tea oh seriously yeah, yeah. and it was like kenyan tea so nobody like so they'd smoke it this one kid this one kid smoked it <laughs> and began high and then uh came back the next day and we didn't even have rolling papers at the time i was rolling weed with like a4 printer paper mm. which is not you shouldn't be smoking that it's oh, so right. thick there's chemicals there's bleach yeah, yeah. um where do you get that idea you guys how do you decide to sell weed to you because i think I, I don't know i think like this is like this was so this was my ninth grade so people were you know ninth grade I'm, you hold in ninth, ninth grade i was 14 okay so, so like start eight right well uh form three but. form one yeah, from from one. one yeah uh -huh. so i <clears throat> and i was always the youngest in my class i'm always like i'm usually the youngest person wherever i'm at yeah and i was always the youngest in my class so niggas in my grade are like 15 i think we, we even had like one or two 16 year olds and then all the kids above are like going to these house parties drinking smoking weed and shit so that's i think what was going on and so like these guys i can sell them some knockoff weed. oh yeah the guys the guys in who were still in middle school i was like yeah these they don't know weed i barely knew what weed was at that time either so i just rolled up some joints of tea took it to school and then if it, like eventually i got my hands on like real weed uh -huh. and that's and that's when i got caught did you ever I, tell anyone that this is fake weed that you're sending these guys yeah. you never told them no. You got you were breaking bad, you guys. I, mean, I was breaking huh? evil. <laughs> <laughs> you, there's no one. You never told any of your I buddies. Was, I was like, maybe like I think maybe like my my best friend at the time. So you're like, ah, I was just like, oh yeah, dude, I sold Malik tea, uh. and then Malik came back the the next day. He was like, yeah, dude, that shit you sold me was good as fuck, and I was like. <laughs> Thank Gee, you. that's why they call me the dealer. <laughs> you guys, that is so interesting. How much was a a blunt? No idea. I forgot. Um, I forgot. Like in Ethiopia, like, we weren't buying blunts. The f like I, I, the first time I bought weed, actually, <clears throat> I think I don't even know how much money I gave. Like the guy who brought me the bag. How like, did you get the plug? You got the age of fourteen. You got in Ethiopia. I feel like you know the way finds you, right? Like it whatever, does? like, yeah. like the. Oh, it does. It's. Uh, it's one of those things like the universe i don't know like i've seen like this manifestation shit law of assumption shit yeah law of attraction law of attraction even law of assumption but like if whatever whatever the state you're in that's what the universe will like present yeah, to you yeah. so like me someone who's like a wannabe pothead you know i think the weed just found mm. <laughs> The guy looked at you and saw this guy. It's like, it's, it's like the same way comedy. Like, I didn't go out looking to be a comedian. Yeah, it was just like an Arabic comedy club followed me, and I was like, shit, I don't do anything. I'm mm. just be a comedian. Mm. Um, so now you said selling the real stuff, you guys. Yeah. Uh, and then I had like a bunch of weed. Like, we weren't even like measuring it. it was, I just knew I had a bunch of weed. People, people said, how much weed do you have? I said, a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then one Friday was the last class of the day a uh, friday biology class and then this lady from the principal's uh the principal's office walks in with like a note <clears throat> saying they need me in the principal's office i don't know what the note said because my teacher and i guess like the teachers had already been talking about it so mr hathaway goes david you're ne actually at the time he used to call me dj dj principal's office take your bag and i was like what take my bag mm. What the fuck does that you mean? You need to go and dump it in the loo, you guys. That was because I was walking with the lady. Uh, yeah, I. You guys should just to, to run this day. Away, I still think about that, but I'm also, I'm also happy at the way things turned out <laughs> with me having to like switch schools. All right. And shit. Uh, but. Yeah, so, so I the got principal to do, checked your bag and found the a principal. Bunch. The principal was in the room, but the head of security actually is the one who does the bag search. Uh, so the head of security was there. We was doing the back search and then there was weed and then they called my dad and then i they talked and then i went home you got it your dad zach fix you guy you have you've been fixed by a zach you guy it's by my zach your dad you guy uh, how old is this guy you guy this guy a, no slam at his zach 
What's wrong with this guy? You don't know. Me, I don't know. Slime Who am I invited here? <laughs> You get it, no, Zach. That's and that's a Zach crazy way to say that. But yeah. um, this time, no. Obviously, like yeah, like in the past. But for this specific thing, no. no. You're just like because like the the <clears throat> two years before that, I had another bag search at that same school. So this this wasn't even my first strike. I had been suspended for shit from mm. that school, and one of them was when I was in the seventh grade. When I was twelve, I had cigarettes in my bag, mm. and uh. Yeah, so I was like, I was like a repeat uh, guy. He was like, this guy, <laughs> a bunch of dudes, a bunch of dudes got expelled from that school, like high schoolers, and it was always like African guys. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was always like there was like a, there was like a shit. There was Americans, there was Europeans, there was Asians. Only Africans. Uh-huh. Got, yeah, because I think it's like it. Ha- I think it had to do with like um, I don't know, just like being in that environment because like obviously different cultures will have different ways of raising their children yeah and i think for the most part because like there's some africans were like more adjusted to that sort of culture culture but then the ones who were getting expelled you could also you could also like kind of notice like yeah this was probably someone who at home wasn't getting this type of freedom Mm -hmm. or probably compared to these kids had like a more difficult home life yeah, yeah. and then when they were in these environments like they were, like we were going crazy because mm. like i don't think i don't i don't think the white kids in my because i don't like, i don't know if you have this but like were you scared of your dad growing up yeah yeah i was i, I don't was. Th- okay I, not scared scared but i was like ah, when he'd come into one room i'd go to ex- the other room exactly yeah i think that's the thing that used to happen in like in the states like 70s 80s but the kids we were growing with, growing up with in those spaces, they had already gone past that mm. type of father, like the dynamic between yeah. a father and a and their children. Mm. So the so that sort of thing, like that sort of home life. So now when you're in these spaces with these kids who don't have that sort of relationship with their dad, you feel like you can get away with murder, mm. and you also want to because it's like you're also kind of rebelling against home life because yeah, you're a teenager. Yeah, right? you're a teenager. I think that's I think that's uh, that's what happened. Mm. Yeah. So you went on, you went to was the other school better? Was it more relaxed? It wasn't better. The school actually the school that I got kicked out of, they were very proud to say it was the best school in East Africa. Mm. So that's it, in Ethiopia, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. In East Africa, they would say oh, the best yeah. school in Africa. So you, so any other any school you go was to a downgrade, was a downgrade according to them. Yeah. And and even even the kids at the school oh no i just remembered one guy who got expelled from ics who wasn't uh african he was israeli uh. but, so actually a lot of the kids not a lot but like a few kids in the new school sanford some of them were just ex-ics people because uh. they got expelled there was these two africans who they got expelled because they got drunk on international day <laughs> we there was this thing at uh at the american school called international day and there was like no learning that day they yeah. were the day would start off with a parade of nations so you meet at the track and the oldest kid from each country would be the flag bearer all right uh and the the, oh, the, the children and the young kids would be at the thing and then you walk around the track once and then that was the parade of nations and then that after that there's an assembly in the assembly it's just everyone's in the audience and then just the flag bearers one by one they take turns saying he- carrying the flag and saying hello into the microphone mm-hmm. so they'd be like uh, uh jumbo from kenya what's up from chicago uh bonjour from france mm-hmm. so there's one year this one kid one of the kids who got drunk he was the flag bearer for i think it was south africa or swaziland so when he got on stage nobody under- <laughs> knew what he was saying yeah and then the other kid was passed out from throwing up in the in the bathroom mm. so the three of us we were in sanford together after getting expelled from ics and then a- after a while this one uh israeli guy he got he joined sanford and i was like what happened and he said he got expelled because he pantsed someone he <laughs> dropped someone's pants all right that, he, that's, that's, and he got expelled which was crazy that's, because that's that's an expulsion offense that's what i was thinking because in, when i was in the seventh like grade him, yeah. we had a girl 
pants another girl during PE and she just got a couple days suspension. Yeah, man. Those guys didn't like Israelis, you guys. <laughs> no, they were. Jackie, I am in the spirit of Kanye West. No, they were like, free Palestine, get this nigga out of here. Get out of here, uh, man. So when did you come out to Kenya, you guys? 2015. Oh. Yeah. So you've been, this is your longest stretch in Kenya, right? This is the anywhere, yeah. Oh, anywhere. Yeah. yeah. So you're planning to hang around them, you're planning to. After living here for so long, like, I'm so comfortable, and, like, I feel like I finally, like, the, my first few years were kind of, like, rough. Did you have any, you did have any networks here, like, friends I mean, I did. Yo, you did. Kind of. Like, and also, like, Kenya is, like, so close to uh, Ethiopia. So, like, there'd be a lot of people I knew from Ethiopia who would, like, visit for a bit. Uh, and also people who I knew from these schools who had moved to Kenya, like, kind of, like, knew them. Uh, I had cousins. Uh... But like for the most part, like like I didn't have anyone I could just like call on a random day and just like to chill. Yeah. Uh, and even when I did, it wasn't like it wasn't like a hang that I would love. Mm. <laughs> uh, but it, like it took me a while to like get used to, like the culture and like people and how people hang out. And so yeah, the first few years were kind of like oof. I don't know if I like this until comedy saved. That's also started doing comedy and. I now I'm just like I'm, I'm used to this. These like I like the, like now even when I meet foreigners, I'm just like you're you're being weird. You guys, because of chilling with Mamito, you guys. <laughs> yeah, Mamito has localized you guys. <laughs> no, that was even before Mamito. That's like that's why like now Mamito and I are like are homies. We're able to be homies mm. it's because of the localization of David Mashari. Uh, Check like, me wearing this kiku you have. You guys, that's a nice one for this podcast. The localization <laughs> of David Mashari, man. You guys, we almost out of time on our, we almost time of uh, on our thing. So you, you plan to hang around? or you plan to? To scoot, I don't know. Well, now that I'm doing comedy, like I would like to do comedy outside of Kenya, but mm. like live, live. I don't think I'd want to live outside of Kenya, mm. unless it's a place like <clears throat> where I could just get like a shit ton of stage time, mm. and I'd want to do like maybe could do six months there, six months here. South Africa would be good, but it's unsafe, you guy, and then there's no electricity. But isn't isn't here unsafe too? No, it's not as crazy as that place. You guy. Oh, where's your camera? my camera no it's in Mombasa in someone's <laughs> house but <laughs> but at least I didn't get stabbed you guys I mean huh? yeah, this is where I got bit by a dog yeah, I'm getting bit by a dog which has no rabies that's that's not so bad you guys <laughs> yeah? so I think South Africa would be but South Africa is good for comedy I think oh, yeah. you'd do well there I think I think and the so scene too. there is really cool so maybe now that it's visa free you should uh, oh, yeah. you know but can you work the, can you work on the visa free what do you mean? Yeah, you know. just go do stage time. It's you not like you. Yeah, you get paid. Okay. We'll just pay in cash. Oh yeah. I nice. think it's like a hundred rand for one of these the shows like we do. How much is that in shillings? That's uh, no, it's not a hundred rand. It's it's because uh, in Kenyan money it comes to ten ten thousand. So ten thousand divided by five. How much is that? Assuming the rand is five bob. Two. Yeah, two thousand rand. Yeah, so that's uh, stage time on a typical show like the one we did on Saturday. So I think, it, and I'm sure it ranges from room to room. But when I was there, it was around that rate. Nice. Know? Yeah, man. So yeah, I guess uh, we'll wind it up there because we are, we are old. Oh yeah, dude, I'm dying to see what's going on yeah, on Twitter. So yeah, can we, man, we, we <laughs> can we wrap this up? I got I to gotta have the Twitter family to check on. Yeah, man. But thanks for coming through, guys. Okay? Check David Mashari out on Showmax, right? Showmax, Roast House. Uh, and comedy riot. I have a podcast called Driving Funny. Yeah, yeah it's, we talked it's about really it in the first version that got that wasn't recording. Yes, uh, they have a very funny podcast called Driving Funny. It's owned fully by a guy called Brian Mutai. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm getting like, I'm getting pimped out you like guy, a motherfucker on this guy podcast. Will screw you, you guy in future, you guy like a damn shark, dude. No. Um, I got tricked into starting a podcast. I was giving my friend Brian Mutai. A ride mm. and then he pulls out a microphone from his back he says hey Check hold this guy. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like what the fuck is this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no that podcast is fine and then and then he just started sending me clips mm. and then i was like oh he just went and said anything yeah, to you guy. i yeah. had, i don't have access <laughs> to, to instagram card, you to the twitter uh, I, but where, where, where is it posted? It may only see clips on it's Instagram. It's only Instagram and Twitter. So it's only those two minutes? Yeah, it's very short. 
Okay. You guys don't want to get into longer form content? I don't, me, I don't want to have a podcast. <laughs> Even no, two, but clearly two minutes. Don't. Two minutes is stretching. It's Brad right? Mutais. Yeah. So what are you talking about? So whatever, so you're like, I, yeah, you're talking to the wrong guy in terms of like, uh, uh, do you guys only record two minutes? No, it's like a long thing. Yeah, so and then, why and then not he post just, that thing, the whole thing on Spotify? You're talking to the wrong guy. Uh, <laughs> okay, tell that guy who it's, owns you, you guys. It's because we, huh? we can't find the upload button on Spotify, yeah, so we have no idea. I've also been looking for it, you guys. <laughs> I rarely upload this video. This guy was supposed to upload vi- this story is on Spotify. But um, you got to get like one of those, I think it's like a third party app, like DistroKid or something. And then you, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Check out my podcast. Mm. It's called Dr- At Driving Funny mm. on Instagram and Twitter. Mm-hmm. There's a few short clips. Have you watched your Comedy Riot episode? No. How come, you guy? There's a time you sent me a clip and said, do you want to watch your thing? You guy couldn't watch no, it. No, I man. said, do you want anything removed? Yeah, I couldn't watch it. Man. I know. Hey, watching myself is one of the hardest things I ever. I mean, I, I can. But this specific one, I didn't want to watch just because, I don't know. Mm. But, but you guys should watch it, man. It's uh, I think the audience was laughing. <laughs> yeah, it's not like Which it's is a good yeah, sign. P- please watch it. But uh, do you know? Do you know who we should get to check out Comedy Riot? It's Showmax. Do you think Showmax knows <laughs> that about Comedy Riot? You think they don't? No, you never see them post about it. Yeah, they've never done any promo. You nah, know. dude. You've been, not put our billboard anyway. I think. I think. I think we. I think they posted a little bit for Roast House. Uh-huh. I don't know if they did on uh-huh. Showmax, uh-huh. but. I don't think they know about comedy. You guys, right? me, I thought we were gonna have a billboard somewhere on Mombasa. Nah. Right? You guys, next to where I used to work. <laughs> nope. You get my former boss. You guys, ready for him to feel like crap. I wish. Is that Emmanuel up there on that billboard? But Showmax didn't come through. You guys. I don't even think it would have been Showmax that's responsible for the billboards. Mm. Oh yeah. I don't think, I think so. Think it's the other guy. Unless Showmax was like the people producing. No, it, I right? think they are. They no. put up billboards for these other these other things. But I don't think that's Showmax. I think it's DNR. All oh, right. Yeah. No, but it's being bought by Showmax. Still, I don't think it's. I, I feel like if it's a sh- if it's if it was a Showmax original, like like a single Kiasi, whenever I see single Kiasi being promoted, it's like it looks like it's Showmax doing that promo. Mm, mm. And then when it was what's that show with Nameless and Wahoo, This Love? Yeah, I think DNR was because I saw billboards for that, but I think yeah. DNR was the one doing. Yeah, because it was promo huge, for Eugene Bugwa there. You yeah. <laughs> Created by Eugene Bugo. Yeah, created by Eugene Bugo. If, if I had a podcast, I'd call it Created by Eugene. Ah, you guy. Do you think that guy, you guy, after he gets a toy? <laughs> Jackie, this is John created by Eugene Bugo Jr. Jackie created by Eugene Bugo. Jackie, my name is John created by Eugene Bugo. That's my dad. <laughs> you gave me that. No. No, no, what does that mean? This guy hates that Eugene Bugwa joke. This is TPL. It's switching off the light. It's dark. It's dark. Oh, it's dark. All right, dark. Let me let you go. No, the joke. Oh, yeah. It's it's one of those. You guys, today we have to edit a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, dude. Don't tell niggas. Okay, that means more work, you guys. But anyway, cheers, man.